Hi guys, and welcome back to the channel. Let's play Frank Herbert's Dune. Game from 2001. This is an action-adventure game. Bear with me, it's an older game. But I do remember this one. So let's start a new story. And watch the intro. To fully appreciate the inevitable unfolding of events, one must begin by placing the events in time. The year is 10,191, 57th year of Emperor Shaddam IV's rule. To be precise, Location, the day of we Peril. are on Arrakis, otherwise known as Dune, the planet of sand. This is the only known source in the entire universe of the essential spice. Now for the main protagonists. First, Duke Leto Atreides, planetary governor of Dune. He has just been double-crossed by the Emperor and slain by the evil Baron Harkonnen. His immediate family have either been killed, arrested, or have escaped. His wife Jessica and his young son Paul, henceforth Duke, have fled. Well, that was cut short. Oh, God. That's okay. Looks At like this my point, ornicopter it is best to call him here. Paul Atreides. The unknowing would say that his was a desperate plight, but the man who will become known as Muad'Dib has already begun to shape his fate. His mission is to round up the Fremen, a people tucked away in the desert who stand up to the Harkonnen. Through them, Paul will regain his kingdom and avenge his family. Mother, don't untie your distiller. It will recycle your body's own water much more effectively. It's all we have. I can see Fremen settlements. Can you smell something strange? Uh, that's one of the sandworms. It's close by. If we step on the sand, it will detect us. I'm going to look for the thumper. It'll put the worm off our scent. All right. Mother, I'm going to find the thumper. Wait here. Okay, we're gonna find the thumper. Well, I think it's right in the distance, right there. Oh god, animations look stiff, right? And the whole thing isn't very detailed, but again, it's from 2001, and it's not too bad, actually. Just not very detailed. I like the uh, design of the what's it called, orny chopper or well, the helicopter thing. So this game sort of follows the storyline, the Dune storyline, quite well. I like the planet right there in the distance, or well, this, yeah, some kind of moon or something. Here's the thumper. That was easy, picking this thing up. Let's go back to. Mother. Time is against us. We must hurry. I'll follow you. We must get to the Fremen site. Time is running out. Okay, so we're gonna go to the Fremen site. Let's go there. Oh god. Is this quicksand? No. Okay. I think we gotta stay on the lighter portions. Mother, your steps are too even. You'll give us away. Try to avoid the areas of dark spice. They slow you down. I don't like this place. So, <laughs> again, facial animations are almost non-existent. Lip syncing and stuff, you know, that's all modern stuff. So let's walk on the lighter side of the of the desert and get to the hideout. What it looks like. There we go. Fear not. As long as we can hear the thumper. Come on, quick! Okay. We gotta go deeper into the 
rock formation. Let's see. Oops. Oh, oh okay. Loading. Oh, look at that. Worm coming. Whoa! Oh, this is actually... Oops. Okay, now what? Um, where do I go? Oh, God. Uh, this doesn't look like it's... Light sand. It's this way. I can't really see. Can we move her? Whoa! Okay. Oh! Oh, God! I guess I died. Well, that was over quick. Um, we start the mission. Hopefully I can re continue where I left off. Yeah, okay. Alright, we're gonna do this again. I think we need to move to the bottom of the screen. That's white. Oh god, now we're running into the darker sands. Oh! Okay. Oh, it's lighter here. Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. Okay. Oh, this is not good. Whoa! Worm coming. Where's Jessica? Taking too long. Oh. <laughs> Took the wrong path here. I can't see where I'm walking. I can't see. Oh god. Okay. Just run, run, run. Oh, there's white uh, sand. White, white sand. That's where you can walk. The game doesn't really tell you where to walk, but I'm still alive, so I guess I'm doing something right. Hello. Yes. Safe successful. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Look at the pretty picture, nephew. A bull of extraordinary strength has flattened Paul's grandfather. I, the most powerful man in the Empire, have killed his father. One of Arrakis's unforgiving storms has swept the child away. An awesome combination of power has rid us of the Atreides, uncle. Raban, you must recapture Dune. Its surrender has been very costly to us. Our investment must pay dividends. May we be bathed in torrents of spice. <laughs> Don't forget to remind the locals of the Harkonnen mean business. Let them bury themselves in a stinking case while we make our fortune. The Fremen are more than just a scattered bunch of natives. Our soldiers report that they are fearsome fighters. <laughs> Do I detect fear in your eyes, Raban? The Fremen quake in their boots at the mere mention of my name. <laughs> of course. The beast, Raban. Flood the desert with their blood. Well, that was a nice cutscene, wasn't it? I do like the voice acting. It's rather good. The Fremen know that the most ferocious storms can be traced to the nethermost regions of the desert. Sometimes a harmless gentle breeze on the sand can turn. Paul, meanwhile, was planning retribution for his father's death and a way to reconquer Dune. Stilgar had found the Atreides in a siege bastion in the desert abyss. This is where Jessica gave birth to Elia, Paul's sister, just before Duke Leto's death. Jessica had become the Reverend Mother of the Fremen. Paul was now called by his Fremen name of Paul Moadib. Inside the siege, he was adding the final touches to stage one of his plan, an all-out guerrilla attack on the Harkonnen spice harvest. We will require more than my tribe's worth of warriors to cut off the Harkonnen spice supply. Stilgar, how about summoning the other tribes? My men are ready to go to war because my word is gospel. 
As for the other siege dwellers, they will need assurances that a brave man is in command. What's our first planned mission? The obliteration of a carriole and a harvester, 200 kilometers in a northwesterly direction from here. I'll go it alone. That's suicidal. When I return, news of this accomplishment will spread around the sieges and the desert's nadir. Then we can count on many more recruits. I refuse to accept these terms. I shall proceed with or without your approval. I wouldn't put it past you. I need equipment. Find Baron. He's in charge of weaponry. He'll supply you with an SOS launcher, a vital object. You'll also need a crease. I believe the Chani is looking into that. Chani? The Atreides are brilliant strategists, but naive on other matters. Come and find me when you have everything. I shall take you to the ambush site. You must make use of your trip to the siege and talk to the Fremen. Knowing that you are near does wonders for their morale. So we're making big steps in the story. Alright, so now we can sort of explore the siege. What's it called? The uh, Fremen Refuge. I'm not sure which way I should go. Oh, this is closed off. Kalu, how was your trip to the siege? We had to time our movements to avoid Harkonnen reconnaissance patrols, but it was well worth the effort. Stilgar asked me to organize the relaying of information between our patrol teams and the siege. Is there any news on the resumption of spice harvesting? From what we are told from several sources, Raban has to respect the high quotas governing the harvesting of spice. Much more so than during his first term here, he's taking risks. His harvesters are sinking their teeth deep into the desert bed. If it were up to me, I would strike now. All right, so I can sort of talk to NPCs. Let's see, who's this? Can you see the statue? It's of Madi, the Messiah whom we await. Okay. Well, I'm I'm him. I'm the Messiah. So don't look at the statue. Look at me. I'd say. Anyway, let's continue exploring. Why, hello. Paul Muadib. People say that you're an Atreides Duke. You're the first nobleman I've met. Okay. All right, so here's the Great Hall, I think. Something like that. Let's first uh, take the other route. Oops. It's all a bit clunky. But again, for a game from 2001, it actually looks quite nice. Look at this. Oh, there's a reservoir of water. Who are you? Johnny? Johnny! I see you've managed to make a workshop. The plants are beginning to grow. We'll soon have a true insight into Fremen Heaven. Leap Kynes would be proud of you. To pick up where my father left off with his plantation is one thing. What you're doing quite another. To organize and unite the Fremen is a massive challenge. Your father saved my life when the Harkonnen launched their offensive. I promise to repay him. Water will flow on Dune. Water and clear air. Trees as well. I would have loved to see your world. I can't take you there, so we'll just have to recreate a part of it here. The water reserves are increasing slowly. We shall be long gone before Dune is fertile. Look, as long as the Harkonnen don't know about your people's plan, there's every chance that it will succeed. I have something for you, Moadib. A crease. You already showed your mastery of it against Jamis. The blade is made from a sandworm's tooth. One of Shai Hulud's teeth. Yes. Only you can carry it. It is the Fremen's secret weapon. Should a stranger see the blade, it will claim his blood. If you lose it, it will automatically self-destruct. Thanks, Johnny. Right, well... Got our knife. Use the, oops. Oh. Uh, Alright, so I had to restart. 
That's a tricky thing to get a game running from 2001. So, that wasn't easy. So that was the crash to desktop. Anyway, we got a knife from Chani. Now, again, doesn't really tell you where to go, what to do, but it shouldn't be too hard. Hey, little one. How are you? Little sister? Whatever you may think, I am not a little baby. Remember, I was in Mother's womb when she drank the water. I share all the knowledge of the succession of Fremen Bene Gesserit mothers. Hers included, big brother. Given the scope of what I know, I could easily call you little brother. <laughs> okay. Well, that's interesting. Uh, the, the voices are, well, stiff and somewhat amateuristic sounding. As you can tell from, uh, you know, just the girl talking. That's just uh, an adult trying to mimic a child's voice. Let's talk to mother, if we can. Paul, did you have one of those wakening dreams? Mother, I know we've already talked briefly of these visions. Don't you think it's high time you filled me in? Destiny's siblings create a web and you see the results. Time and space intersect at these points. The interstellar navigators use spice to work their way through space-time and to pilot their long-distance aircraft. You're equally sensitive to the presence of spice. I'm convinced that it's responsible for your dreams. You can no doubt visualize some key moments whose ending is still undecided. Are they fragments of the future? Can I change them? Is that the power of Kwisatz Haderach? Kwisatz Haderach? Excuse me, Paul. I have to mark your sister's memory tests. Oh, that was abrupt. Anyways. I throw a lot of information at you. It's all faithful to the book. But... If you know nothing about the Dune universe, it's going to be somewhat difficult to comprehend the story. Anyway, this is not the way forward. I guess we need to move up then. So the game's fairly linear. There's no open areas to explore. So you are pushed into a certain direction. I guess we need to pick up some gear here. You've never used an SOS jammer before. No. The spear missiles that we deploy are not potent enough to destroy a Harkonnen carryall. Its engines are too big. The only way is to hijack a harvester as it collects spice, and then have it picked up by a carryall. Blocking the sand-removing nozzles turns the harvester into a self-timing bomb, with enough force to destruct the carryall. I understand the function of the jammer in disrupting the harvester's transmission mechanism and cutting off all communication links, but why the SOS signal? That's where it gets interesting. When activated, the jammer emits a false distress signal. The carryall comes to the rescue of the harvester, reasoning that it's encountered a sandworm. Clever. But that implies that the saboteurs only have a limited amount of time to block the sand-removing nozzles. Every plan has its drawbacks. Here, use it to good effect. Well enough to know that you've come to parrot my pots, Paul Modib. However, these sandheads have already gobbled up the first batch of Kulan Mishmish. I have not come for your food. You never told me to whom the Harkonnen armor in your kitchen belongs. Jemis. He brought it back as a memento of a foray near the Great Shield. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to bring that up. Nobody is to blame for my husband's death. I sometimes think to myself that it was all in vain. If only I could have avoided it. I know, Paul. His passing away might well have left me at the mercy of men with completely different characters to yours. I'm fortunate in this respect. 
Jamis was a friend. He taught me the value of life. May God bless you, Paul Moadib. I will say aloud what the others are whispering. I believe you are the Messiah. May the Coriolis spare you. Okay. Still not sure what to do, but let's see what well, we did talk to all the characters here, so You haven't left yet? Oh, okay, so I need to leave. First I have to find a way to leave. Um, so we already been here. Even sure if I can leave this place. Um, this way we've been there. Uh, I guess I need to track back into the corridors here. Oh, this is the starting area. Um, okay. Have you ever seen a carriole on fire, Muadib? No, not yet! Oh, okay. Darkon can't wait. Can wait a while. Take part in guerrilla attacks against Dar Harkonnen. Right. We will make tracks at nightfall. The worm will act as our transport until we get to the ambush point. Has Baron explained how the SOS jammer works? Uh, it jams the harvester's yeah. communication network and sends a false SOS to the carriole. Good. Your mission is split into three parts. First, you must climb onto the harvester and hide the jammer. You must tread carefully, as there will be almost certainly a military presence around the harvest area. Stage two. Once the SOS has been launched, you have to work your way inside the harvester and locate the sand-removing nozzles. These must all be shut down to create the state of overheating. Thirdly... Let me guess. Escape from the harvester before it is taken away by the carriole. Otherwise, I'll be stuck inside when it explodes. Your intelligence will only be of any use should you survive. Use this projectile pistol. Stilgar, don't worry about me. You're as good a judge of character as your father was. Right. Well, I guess that's sort of... Um concludes the first part of this let's play maybe I'll come back to this thing and uh, we'll pick up from here we're gonna do some Harkonnen sabotaging anyway thanks for watching and see you in the next video Ooh, nice reflections by the way